Welcome back to the Jack Swarbrick Show, where it is my pleasure to welcome one of our special guests today, Notre Dame Associate Head Women's Basketball Coach and National Champion, Miel IVDL. Thanks for taking the time to come on the Jack Swarbrick Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We do have to start with the tough news. Tough game against UConn. Without question, the two top women's basketball teams in the country. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys are disappointed, not necessarily because you lost, but because you didn't play as well as you know you can play. Absolutely. Um, you know, it was a tough, tough game, you know, credit to Connecticut. Um, we just needed to put, you know, two halves together. Um, we're disappointed in our defense and executing offensively. But um, like you said earlier, it's December. Um, it's a game that we can learn from. And so we're going to take – Take those, um, take the the film, and, and go back and study it, and, and get better. And we're taping it on the on this on the afternoon after uh, you lost to that game. And I know you and the staff and Muffet have spent the whole day mm -hmm. going through that film. And I guess the good news is, it's disappointing that there are correctable mistakes. But the right. good news is, there's lots of correctable mistakes. Absolutely, it's 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 a game that you're, you're testing. You're playing the, one of the best teams in the country to see where you are. Um, we're going to go back and find out ways that we can get better defensively and offensively. And, um, you know, games like that, like, you, you learn from them. So you, with the mistakes that we made, we're going to go back, um, reevaluate um, what we're doing, and, and, and learn from it. And this has always been your philosophy as a program. You play the toughest possible non-conference schedule that you can play. So you're ready not only for your conference, but for when it really counts the end of February and March. Absolutely, because, I mean, we're, we're, preparing, for, we're preparing for the tournament. So ACC always prepares us. We have almost seven to eight teams that are, that are ranked. Um, and, you know, obviously Connecticut um, is the team that we have to go through in the end. And so we're going to make sure that we're prepared and playing those games early on so it, it will help us down the road. You, of course, are a legend here at Notre Dame for a variety of reasons. You and Ruth Riley uh, led the Irish to the only NCAA basketball championship in school history. Back in 2001, man, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Since you returned as an assistant nine years ago, you're in your 10th season. You've been part of a ridiculous string of consistent success that includes five straight trips to the Final Four. Now, with all this success, I'm going to ask you a difficult question, <laughs> and you can give a multi-part answer. Okay. What moment stands out? Absolutely, the national championship, um, winning my senior year, um, my fifth year, going back home and playing in front of my family and friends and um, just going through that adversity that I went through with the injuries and having that year back just made it all worthwhile, I guess, with, you know, all the sacrifice and, you know, blood, sweat and tears of those surgeries and just battling back and just, I, I, it was a lot of character that I built during that time and, you know, be able to finish out on top was probably the most memorable experience of my life. And, of course, you beat Purdue 68-66. You talk about your hometown in St. Louis. And a lot of folks say there's more pressure when you go home to play in front of family and friends. But mm -hmm. as the floor leader of that team, you certainly didn't show any pressure that weekend. No, I was really focused um, that whole year. I think um, us losing in the Sweet 16 uh, the year prior, um, we, we had great leadership you know, with Ruth Riley, a great senior class, a veteran. For me, this was it. So that whole year, I d d just was really, really focused on my plan, my goal. And my goal was to get back home. And so it was a joy for me to be able to play in front of my family and friends because I felt comfortable. And you spent five years here at Notre Dame. You mentioned the knee surgeries, two torn ACLs. Mm -hmm. The first, you missed most of your freshman year. The second, your junior year. What did you learn from the experience of having to battle back from that? I mean, I've had a meniscus scoped, mm -hmm. and that took me six months uh, to get back right. to full strength. And that's a minor surgery. You had to battle back to play elite-level competitive sports. What did you learn through both of those experiences? Just my strength um, and determination and character, my passion for the game, because um, and just learned a lot of confidence in myself, um, knowing that I was going to get back, um, just working really hard. Just strength and character, I think, is the biggest things that you learn. Um, um, not to take anything for granted. I feel like, you know, with my first knee surgery and then the second one, um, I realized, you know, who I was as a person and um, in the game of basketball and just um, knowing what I wanted to do with my time here. Uh, it allowed me to look at the game from a different perspective um, and just to, the, the strength is what pretty much carried me through. And I think that um, my teammates respected that and they rallied behind me because of it. You know, I, I can't say there's anything good about tearing an ACL, but if you hadn't missed most of your freshman year, you wouldn't have been around for the 2000 right. championship. You ever thought about that? I do. I mean, it was almost two games. In, I mean, two games away from not getting that year back. I think it was my fifth game, um, and I, it, to me, it was just like it was God's way of telling me that you know I had something bigger and greater that was in store for me down the road. So I do think of that of just how um, slight a couple games could have um, that could not have happened for me. 
and uh, your star teammate who also helped lead the team to that championship, Ruth Riley, has been back on campus this fall. She's now the GM of the WNBA franchise down in San Antonio. What's it been like to have Ruth around a lot? Because she's been around a lot in recent years Mm -hmm. because she went and got her MBA. Right. It's been great. I mean, she's just so – such a superstar here and she does she's such a great leader great mentor um she's at a calming presence i think um the, the the players they see her all around um you know the joy center and also um they ask for her opinion on, on different things her just presence here is such is, it was so positive and then when she comes back it just allows them to be able to pick her brain um she gives great input to coach McGraw and our staff and the team and they just really respect her so it's nice for her to be here Another great moment for you happened just this past Sunday when you were inducted into the Notre Dame Ring of Honor and Purcell Pavilion where your number now hangs alongside Ruth Riley's number and one of your pupils, Skylar Diggins. What was that day like for you? It was overwhelming. I just I just felt so much gratitude. It was just pretty much a um, full circle of my life here at Notre Dame, my career, the impact I've had um, as a co- player and a coach, but um, just the honor and the respect that Notre Dame, um, it's the highest honor you can get and Obviously, coming, making my decision, not thinking that I would be amongst one of the one a legend here, but realizing that that I am, and all the hard work just really, really paid off, and um, the impact this community and, and Coach McGraw and this program has had on me is just so positive, and just uh, just love. I just it was overwhelming. I know Coach McGraw has had such a positive impact on you. Let's mm-hmm. first of all talk about the impact she had on you as a player, how he, she helped you uh, become great, so good you won a championship, earned All-American honors, mm-hmm. um, became the number one senior uh, player in the country at your height, and went on for, to a professional career. What mm-hmm. role did she play in that? A huge role. Um, so proud of it. I learned so much. I've learned the game of basketball from her. Um, she's so smart. Um, just her being a point guard, um, teach taught me how to be a leader, taught me how to work hard. She challenged me um, on and off the floor. Um, I just learned, I just, she, de- I was really developed here um, with the staff and definitely Coach McGraw, just having a voice. Um, she's always taught me um, how to be strong, confident, and that, I think that carried over in my professional career as a coach and also in the WNBA. Now, after your WNBA career ended, you spent a couple of years at Xavier yes. under another one of your former mm-hmm. coaches, and then you came back home uh, to coach uh, with Coach McGraw. How did your relationship change, if at all? Um, I always kept in touch with her when I was away. And, um, you know, I was always following the program and having the opportunity to come back and interviewing here was um, it was completely um, life changing. Really, um, it gave me an opportunity to stay around the game that I loved and also be in a place that I love. Um, I believe in Coach McGraw. I believe in the values that she has here um, and in Notre Dame, what it can do for student athletes. And so it was a perfect fit. But it was um, it. I guess what changed was just my um, appreciation for what Coach McGraw has done for me. I don't think you realize that as a student athlete. I think you know it's, it's hard work and, you know, the coaches, um, you know, they spend a lot of time um, developing players. But when you become a coach under a Hall of Fame coach, it's like, wow, now I see, you know, all the time and, and sacrifice that the coaches make, that Coach McGraw makes and how smart she is. It's like you see the, the other side. Um, and it's just, it was, it was pretty amazing. Everybody knows she's pretty intense, but I'll share <laughs> with you, uh, like most units on campus, we have an offsite in June, and uh, she was our guest speaker one day, and she told us that she's mellowed. Would you agree that she's mellowed? She has, and I think she adapts to the generation. Um, I think, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the generation of kids were, were different. You know, we're in millennial year with the millennials that are totally different for even from my <laughs> era. Um, so you have to approach it a different way. And I think she's adapted to a different type of players, just like different players walk through the door and she changed the offense to make sure that um, she's highlighting everyone's strengths and not their weaknesses. And so I think she's done a tremendous job with that because um, I know that's probably had to be really hard for her, you know, being the way that she was, her intensity. But you have to change with the generation. I think she's done an excellent job with that. I don't want to skip over your WNBA career because only the best get the chance to do that. You played four years in the WNBA, three years for the Indiana Fever. And, and I know it had to make you feel very comfortable that I, I know it's about a three-hour drive south, but to still be in the state of Indiana where your very diehard fans from up here uh, at Notre Dame could make regular trips down there, did that help the transition? It did. I mean, down the road, like you said, I have family in Indianapolis. I'm from St. Louis, but I have a lot of first cousins in Indianapolis, so I felt like, first of all, the state of Indiana has been great to me, and I knew that my Notre Dame family was right down the road. My, you know, Coach McGraw, they've come, they used to come up to watch me practice, watch me play, take me to lunch, just have that, um, you know, because that 
that relationship it continued and it, they weren't far, very far away. So I felt, I felt very comfortable. Um, we had a lot of Notre Dame fans in, in Indianapolis, so it was, a, it was a perfect transition for me. Now, uh, one of the things you are in charge of is recruiting. Uh, do you feel that even you, at your young age, have had to make some changes to uh, relate to the current players that you're recruiting? Definitely, with the, with the um, era of social media, uh, these kids, they're always on their phones. They're always, um, you know, having different, you know, Twitter, you know, um, Snapchat, Facebook. There's so many different things that um, you can learn. Um, you can get to know players that way. And just the, it's just it's changed the face of recruiting. Um, and so I've had to adapt to that. I know different ways that I can highlight Coach McGraw and also highlight our program through social media because that's what's attracting to the student athletes. But it was definitely different from 10 years ago um, recruiting. So I'm trying to stay with the times and be current with, with the kids that we're looking at. What's harder, being a player or being a coach? I think, honestly, being a coach, because as a player, if I see something, I can change it with, with my own effort, being on the floor, you know, having the ball in my hands and, and distributing and, and trying to, um, to make plays the, the way that Coach McGraw wants the plays to be, to be made. And as a coach, both of it is fun, but I just feel like I have more access, obviously, um, to, do it by, to do it myself when I'm a, as a player. Um, as a coach, you see it, and you just have to find different ways to motivate each player and also to – to have them understand what you want to, to, to execute on the floor. You know, it's a cliche question that a lot of sports fans make fun of when they see a reporter during a game say, how did this feel? But, but I want to try to ask it in a deep way. When you're on the floor mm -hmm. and you know you've made a great play, because mm -hmm. I want you to compare the feeling, but how does it feel when you know you've made a great play on the floor? I mean, it feel, it's, an, it's, it's a great feeling because you feel like you've contributed in a positive way, some, if, if it was the shot, it was the charge, you're physically contributing. Um, that's the way I feel as a player. Now compare that to the feeling you get if you've been coaching your team to run a particular set that mm -hmm. they have a problem with or a player to make a particular pass or make a particular drive, and then finally in a big game they do it. Mm -hmm. What is that feeling like, and how does it compare to making a great play yourself? Um, it's, that's an awesome, also an awesome feeling. I remember for me scouting, um, I think I really realized like I've turned the corner as a, as a coach was the game I scouted Tennessee when we went to the final four in 2000, 2011, uh, with Devereaux and Dallin and Overson, Skylar Diggins, when we won that game and that wasn't a game that people thought that we were going to win, um, beating Tennessee for the first time. And it was my scout. And I just felt, I just felt overwhelmed with, um, I just felt like, you know, when it, you feel like it clicked, yeah. I, I yeah. got it then. I, I guess that's, I don't know if that expressing yes. it that way, but that's, that was the first game where I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm there. I, I, I understand. I know. I know how to um, dissect film and I understand how to make, it, make our team realize what you need to do scouting wise and also the, to prepare Coach McGraw. And that was the first time that I, I really felt like everything made sense. Like I took, a, I took a, a giant leap forward with that. And that was an exciting feeling because I was like, I affected the game, and I wasn't on the floor. And so I was really excited for that. And that, that whets the competitive juices because you're now like, yeah, I, I, I can make a difference. Yes. Still. There's no higher praise than your teammates or your fellow coaches on campus. But what about when the WBCA oh, votes you the National Assistant Coach of the Year for Division I, which you won last season the first time they gave out the award? I, felt, I was really excited for that. I was totally shocked. Though. I was totally shocked for that award. And it made me realize that um, even my peers have respect for me, people that are not even part of the Notre Dame family. And um, they recognize my hard work or they just appreciate it from, the, from a distance. And so that was really, really humbling. And I, I was really honored by that for my peers. And they, I've had great relationships with a lot of staffs and, um, you know, bouncing ideas off of um, a lot of different people. And I have my mentors with everybody from Notre Dame, but to have it from um, just the WBCA was, I was, I was really, um, I was really honored. You focus on the guards in practice. So I want to ask you about three of them that you have coached, all of whom have either had successful careers, great careers, and one in particular is having one right now, <laughs> but we got to start with Skylar Diggins. Oh, it's just amazing. Um, that was the first person when I um, actually got the job here. Coach Murray said, "We need to get Skylar Diggins," and I'm like, "Who's Skylar Diggins?" You know. <laughs> so that was the first person that you know, as a, as a coach, I was th um, there to to target with Skylar, and we just developed such a great bond. Um, something that I probably 
it's very genuine, very organic, um, the bond that we have. We still have a great relationship. We're very, very close. Um, and that, that meant a lot to me because I watched her grow from the time that I recruited her and the time that she chose to come to Notre Dame to see where she is now. Um, she's just a very special person to me, and um, I'm just honored that Notre Dame and blessed Notre Dame, uh, our connection with Notre Dame brought us together. And her first year, she was the shooting guard. Yes. Then she became the point guard. How did yeah. you help her with that transition? Just, I mean, just a lot of film, a lot, of, lot, of, lot of talks with her, a lot of um, individual workouts um, that we were allowed to, to have, and just a lot of conversation about how to run a team. Uh, we, we were with each other a lot just with film, and, and she kind of, and she knew me as a player, so that, that was my advantage, that she knew what I did here, how I came back, and how I led the team being the point guard, and I feel like she looked up to me in that regard, um, so she was very receptive to me coaching, and she was just a sponge. When you talk with your teammates when other people talk with your teammates a word that sometimes comes up about you as a player is you were bossy <laughs> yes. I like to tell people what to do yes. uh, and I know that's important for a point guard uh, Skyler never had any trouble telling people what to do no. and in her case you almost had to back her off a little absolutely bit. how'd you do that um, just focusing on what we needed as a team. Sometimes I'd had to reel her back in because her passion and energy just almost became too much, almost was going to blow up the offense. And um, I had to talk to her a lot of times about just time and score, of just keeping patient and not showing your frustration. She was one that was very emotional because um, she wanted to win so bad and she was so passionate. So sometimes it was just reeling her back in, and she still was receptive to it. Let's move on to the next great point guard you coach, Jewel Lloyd. Yes. Talk to me about her. Um, just a phenomenal athlete. I don't think I've been around um, anyone as phenomenal as she was athletically. Um, she um, came in as a freshman, started right away. Um, knew, we knew somebody. She was somebody that was going to be a program changer. It was a it was a perfect transition from Skylar graduating and also Kayla McBride graduating. Um, but she was a gym rat. Um, she lived in the gym, and you just loved um, very very. Um, very humble, you know, just really just wanted to win. It was just somebody just with just an exceptional athletic, uh, athletic ability. I've never really been around somebody that, that was so exceptional. And right now you are coaching another great point guard in her final season, Lindsey Allen. The most poised guard I think I've ever been around. Wow. It's what's, what's kind of crazy with L.A. that she stepped into um, filling Skylar Diggins' yeah. shoes, which is very, very hard for anyone to, be, to have to step into those shoes. And we went on a foreign tour her summer of her freshman you know, summer before her freshman year, and it she showed us what poise that she had, and that was right. She you know took the job and just soared from there. Um, she is she works. She's the hardest worker. Um, she's very quiet, so personality is, is is very different. But she's so effective and so efficient, and she really makes everyone around her better. And um, is somebody that you just cannot have off the floor. I find your full name fascinating, Niel Deidre Jamila Viveka Ivy. Yes. Are there special meanings behind those names? I, I don't think so. My mom, um, I'm the youngest of four. I have four older brothers. And I, I asked her, she was, every time she was pregnant, she just said she had a name. <laughs> and so <laughs> when I were having four, four boys, I think she just tagged all the names on to me. Um, so I don't know if there's any special significance, but those were the names that she really, really uh, were drawn to. That's a great story. <laughs> uh, basketball is a huge part of your life, but I know it's not your life. Yes. Your son, Jaden who's yes. now 14, is your life. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Jay. Um, he's just a tremendous young man, and um, he's 14 now as a freshman in high school, and I've been blessed to be here at Notre Dame in a stable faith-based environment that he's got a chance to grow around, grow up around just an entire Notre Dame community and an entire family. He's just, he loves sports. Um, he's a very um, caring young man, and um, I'm just, you know, just blessed to be his mother. I just, I just love him so much. Now he's the son of a superstar, and that's not easy. Hard. That's yeah. not easy. But I've seen a little tape of him. I know he can play <laughs> basketball. Yeah, he loves the game. He, he's tried out a lot of different sports growing up. I just try to keep him active and keep him busy because he's a very busy young man, and um, he's kind of, you know, drawn to love the game of basketball. Obviously, I talk basketball all day long. He's always at practices. He's always been in the gym with me. Um, he's um, for somebody for somebody like me that has um, my schedule is so busy. I feel like he does an excellent job of. Um, of understanding my, my schedule and my role. And with that, he gets an opportunity to be around some of the greatest players in the world. And I just love that he loves women's basketball. A young, a young boy, young man loving women's basketball. I love that he's grown up and is idolizing Skylar Diggins and Jewel Lloyds. You know, I think that's wonderful. Not only is he confident, He's got some charisma. There's a YouTube video of him <laughs> making a little appearance at a women's basketball event on the floor. The young yes. man can dance. Yes, he can dance. He's got great personality. He's got a lot of energy, and uh, um, he's just a loving kid. 
I know we got to let you go here because you have to. Uh, it's not like they gave you an easy game, or you scheduled <laughs> one. I guess you can blame yourselves. Uh, an easy game after UConn. You got to go up and play in one of the most hostile environments in college basketball against a ranked DePaul team yes. that loves nothing better than to have a shot to beat Notre Dame. Yes, we have to be ready and focused. We're going to take this day to um, fix the mistakes, watch um, and, and learn from last night's ups, uh, loss, and um, you know go down there and be fight on the road. It's going to be a tough environment. It's a great atmosphere. It's another great women's basketball game. So we, we're going to be ready, and I think we're going to respond. That game is Saturday night. Tell me right now, how good does, can this year's Notre Dame team be? I think the sky's the limit for us. Um, we have great leadership. You know, Brianna Turner's coming to her own. Uh, we have great depth. You know, Jackie Young, you know, she's going to be a rising star. I'm a great freshman. You have great sophomores. It's just um, – just learning from our mistakes, like I said earlier, and just continuing to get better every day. But I definitely think we have a chance to be something great. You know, Neil, we, we mentioned earlier that you are also in charge of recruiting mm -hmm. for the Notre Dame women's basketball team. And I think everybody who just heard you speak or watched you uh, on Watch ND knows why you are such a great salesperson <laughs> for this university and this basketball program. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for having me. We'll be back with former NBC Sports president Ken Chanzer right after this timeout on the Jack Swarbrick Show. In the locker room, we're not really talking much. We're kind of, you know, visualizing what's going to happen on the ice and staying focused on what's up next. Open up the door, kind of blinded by the light right away that comes in through the tunnel. It's like kind of just being thrust into the world. It feels like everything's kind of over on top of you. Playing for my teammates, I mean, you'd literally do anything for them. You're a family with them. It's amazing playing with a team like this.